Hey guys, so what's the difference between an entry-level thermal scope like this AGM TS25256 versus one that costs like five times as much? So it basically comes down to five things that I'm gonna go over in this video. You have the resolution of the thermal sensor, the refresh rate of the thermal sensor, your field of view or like base magnification, the range finding capabilities, and the battery life. So the thermal sensor resolution is the big one. You basically have three different um, platforms that AGM uses. You have the 256, the 384, and the 640. So how do you know which scope has which sensor? So if you actually look at the naming conventions of their scopes, you can figure it out really easily. So just real quick, um, the, the TS stands for thermal scope. So that's gonna differentiate uh, from AGM's other thermal uh, products. So they have thermal monoculars that start with TM. They have uh, binoculars that are TB. So all of their thermal scopes are gonna be TS. The next two digit number here is going to be the objective lens focal length. So in this case, the TS25 is a 25 millimeter. So the objective lens is what's collecting all of that infrared uh, radiation and directing it towards the sensor. So the higher the number, the kind of more zoomed in you're gonna be at the base magnification. And then the last three numbers in the product name are going to be the microbolometer resolution. So that is the number of pixels that make up the thermal sensor on the scope. Now, AGM scopes kind of fall into one of three categories, and um, you can kind of see a scale representation of the three different sizes uh, to give you an idea of the difference. So at the entry level, you're looking at 256 pixels by 192 pixels. So that's literally the number of little microscopic pixels that are detecting and measuring the infrared radiation that's being pulled in from the objective lens. So if we zoom in here, um, I actually drew these uh, at an accurate scale uh, number of pixels. So I have 256 pixels this way and 192 pixels this way. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the resolution of the thermal sensor is a different measurement from the resolution of the display screen. So you actually have two different stats that you're reading if you look into these scopes. So you have the resolution of the thermal sensor that's collecting the infrared radiation and converting that into, you know, uh, um, that, you know, the processor is converting that information into a visualization that is shown on the display that is right here in front of the eyepiece lens. So one thing that's interesting is, is all of AGM's thermal scopes include a, a very high quality um, display. So they're all gonna be 1024 by 768 with a 50 Hertz refresh rate. So the display is actually a higher quality image than what a low end thermal um, sensor is able to collect. So, um, so obviously it'll get upscaled for the display, but the advantage is even if you have a small thermal sensor in the scope, the display is gonna have a very high refresh rate and the reticle in all of the display information on the screen is gonna be really sharp. But overall, the difference between the different thermal sensor resolutions means that you're going to have a higher fidelity uh, between the contrast of the variations in heat of whatever you're looking at. So you'll be able to see more details. You'll be able to detect things at a further distance. So with the smaller sensor size, things are gonna kind of get averaged down a lot more than, you know, like a 640 sensor. So again, I just want to emphasize, you know, with all three of these sensors, these are kind of shown um, in scaled relation to one another, but each one of these sensors, all the data that's being collected by each of these sensors gets scaled to the same display size. Okay. So obviously if you're scaling this up to a 1k display versus scaling this up to a 1k display, you're going to have a lot less pixelization with the 640 and overall just a much higher quality image.
All right, so that leads me to the second difference you're gonna see uh, with the lower end scopes is the refresh rate. So all of the 256 sensor scopes, the thermal sensors are gonna have a 25 hertz refresh rate. So that means the number of times per second you will be seeing a new image in the display. And again, the display, all the displays have a 50 hertz refresh rate, but the input, what's collecting that heat information and displaying it, um, on the lower end scopes, you only have a 25 hertz refresh rate. Now, that's kind of hard to demonstrate and show you the difference in a video because it all depends on the frame rate of the video that you're watching. Um, but if just to kind of give you an idea, traditional movies, like if you go to a theater and watch a movie, those are typically shown and recorded in 24 frames per second. OK, um, if you look closely and pay attention, you will see some choppiness, especially within fast moving action. OK, so the higher the frame rate or hertz in this in this case, the more smooth, fast moving objects will appear, which is typically what you want when you're hunting um, and trying to you know follow a fast moving object. So the higher the refresh rate, the better in this case. So all of the 256 resolution scopes have a 25 hertz refresh rate and all of the higher resolution sensors will have a 50 hertz refresh rate, which again, you're paying for that higher quality uh, sensor. Now, the third thing that differentiates the price is the base magnification. Now, in general, um, the farther you want to be able to see with your base magnification, the more expensive the scope is going to be. So that's gonna have a higher focal length um, at the front of the scope to collect that infrared energy. But keep in mind, you're gonna have a much narrower field of view. So it's not uh, a matter of because it's more expensive, it's better. Um, it just depends on what range do you mostly use the scope within. If you're um, using it within 100 yards and you're working really close range, you'd actually be much better off with a wider field of view. Um, that way you're not stuck with tunnel vision and seeing just a very narrow uh, field of view. But also keep in mind that all of these scopes also include uh, multiple levels of digital zoom, which again, paired with a higher resolution sensor, you have a pretty decent quality. But with the lower resolution sensors, um, the digital zoom can degrade pretty quick and you, and you experience quite a bit of uh, pixelization. The fourth thing that sets these entry level thermal scopes apart from the more expensive ones is the range finding capability. So AGM has the Varmint series product line that has a built in laser range finder that shows you the distance of your target right up in the corner of the screen. Now the Rattler and the Adder both have range finding capabilities. It's just, it uses a stadiometric um, method of calculating it. And what that does is it basically makes an assumption about how big a certain target is. And then depending on how small it is in the screen, uh, it'll calculate the distance from you. Um, so it's not super accurate. It's it's definitely not as accurate as a laser rangefinder. But again, if you're working really close range, um, you know, having that laser rangefinder might not be super important to you. And the fifth and final differentiator is battery life. So the Rattler series comes with two um, CR123A batteries. They're not rechargeable, although you can get rechargeable um, CR123s. Now with fresh batteries, you're gonna get uh, about four and a half hours of continuous use out of your scope. Now compare that to the more expensive Adder series scopes, um, which have two built-in 18650 batteries plus another CR123, uh, you can get up to 15 hours of continuous use with that scope. However, the thing is, this has a USB port where you can plug in an external battery pack. And plus, you can remove the batteries from the device and just get some rechargeable ones. They're really cheap and you can just have a bunch of them on hand and swap them out as you need. So I personally don't find that too bad. Um, but other than that, you know, these entry level scopes have a ton of the advanced features that you'd find in a lot of expensive ones has built in Wi-Fi. You can stream the image live to your cell phone with the app. You can record video 
um, with the scope right on board. You just press the button, hold down the button, um, and it'll start recording a video. You can snap pictures. You can save several reticle profiles. Um, so you, if you have different rifles you want to mount this on, you can actually zero it in. It has one shot zero. So there's a ton of different features that you would typically see in more expensive thermal scopes that are built right into this. So um, consider these five main points that I went over in this video um, before deciding which one you want to go with. And I'll have a bunch of links in the description below um, if you want to buy this one. This is the TS-25256. Um, and I'll link to some of their other popular scopes as well. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.